The views and opinions expressed on the following program are those of the host and guests and do not necessarily reflect the policy or position of Owen TV's management, staff, or board of directors. Detroit Basketball! Hello and welcome into Views from the Sideline. I'm Joey Tyson, my partner Malik Hill, and we're in the middle of October, and we are in full swing football mode, football mode, football mode. We are two weeks away from, right? It's two weeks away from NBA tip off, basically, but uh, we'll save that for another week. Maybe next week, maybe the week of tip off, um, but there's no real big news. <laughs> Uh, anywhere with basketball college basketball also kind of starting to ramp up a little bit uh teams are getting going early polls are coming out i will say actually uh with michigan state's open practice they, they showed some talent on that team i don't know if you saw any of those those dunk highlights Bowen or anything. car is uh one of the highest sleepers yeah in basketball in general mm -hmm. pro college high school yeah Double clutching from the free throw line with ease does not make sense. Yeah. Uh, I don't know what else he can do yet, but he, he needs, can, he's going to have some dunks that yeah. just make the crowd go nuts. He needs to take off from before the free throw line. He's, he's even more freakish than Miles Bridges, and that's yeah. something. Miles was a better player coming in. Yeah. yeah they, Cohen is a freak of nature. They also did get uh, Jason Richardson's son. Did Jace, you see that? Yeah. Uh, is he a nice legacy pickup? Three star or four star? Uh, four. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, I just saw that the other day. I think that's kind of cool to have. Um, Michigan State's first game is November 6th. Yeah. Not that far away. Right. So we'll get into that uh, coming up. But big week this week for college football, I would say normally, but this uh, year might be different. Michigan, Michigan State week, always a fun time. Uh, one of the biggest weekends uh, around this area, and it gets everybody fired up. But there's not much fire this year. Well, yeah. it's maybe a dumpster fire for Michigan State. Um, man, uh, we'll just go right into the Rutgers game. Caden Hauser getting his first start. Looked great off the rip. It was a first start. It was a good start. Yeah. Uh, yeah, he, he looked comfortable after the first few drives. He added an extra element using his legs. Um, looked, looked confident. Um, and the team was rolling. 24-6 lead going into the fourth quarter. And they blew e it. Even, even after a few fumbles. Yeah. Giving the ball back to Rutgers, trying to give them momentum. Yeah. They still maintained. And both, team, like, for the both most teams part. had turnovers. It was yeah. a little bit sloppy at times. Um, and then. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 18 straight from Rutgers in the fourth quarter. And Michigan State goes down to Rutgers. Their season is over officially 100 percent like they can't even make a baby bowl game that we were talking about last week it's just over so at this point this is basically all they have left in my opinion this game is all they have left for making something of their season to say that hey we knocked off michigan i don't think it's gonna happen don't get me wrong but that's got to be their only real motivation in my opinion um, I'm still excited for the game because you hope that Michigan State will show something, some sign of life in this game because it's a rivalry game. But, boy, it could get ugly, and that's what I'm afraid of. Their defense just cannot hold anybody. When, when a few things go wrong, it seems like I don't know if they quit some MSU fans say they quit, but mm -hmm. thing, things go wrong. Very Everything goes wrong very quickly once a few things go wrong. Yeah, and it, it just seems like it keeps happening over and over. Um, they show signs at times where they look decent, that they could do something, um, and then it, it just falls apart. I, I feel like they're still trying to figure out who's like their number ones for every position, it feels like. Quarterback, they just tried Caden Hauser. Looks like the guy for now. 
wide receiver, it seems like a it's new- a it's a rotation. Really. Yeah, there's like no number one guy. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I guess like their running game is a little bit solidified. Nathan Carter has kind of been the guy, but they're still not getting a ton out of him. Yeah. The O line isn't great, so yeah. right, which is a problem. And it, the O line's been a problem for a while now. Yeah. Um, and then on the other side, Michigan's just rocking and rolling still. They had a scare and they're down to Indiana. It, it was it was pretty funny. Yeah. I, I was watching the four box on YouTube TV, mm-hmm. and there were updates. At some point of each game, like watch out, Indiana up seven nothing, yeah. and they show the touchdown pass that Indiana threw, mm-hmm. and then yeah, it's just, Michigan got into their groove and it was an onslaught. They scored fifty two straight, and uh, yeah, I think within the by the end of the first quarter, didn't they have twenty one? Was it twenty one to seven or was that? I was in the first half. Okay, yeah, they were down. Was it seven seven or seven nothing? I can't remember. Yeah, it was seven nothing. Yeah. Because Indiana struck first, and then Michigan scored. End of the first, it was 7-7. Okay. Yeah. yeah, and then at the end of the first half, it was 14-7. Mm-hmm. Okay. No, I'm looking at another game. I'm I was sorry. like, I thought they scored pretty quickly. <laughs> okay. Because I know at one point end I looked. End of the looked, first quarter was 7-0. Second quarter, 21-0 okay. Michigan, and so then, was, yeah. Yeah, so it was the second quarter where they brought it on. I knew it was, like, all in one quarter, but I couldn't, yeah. I couldn't remember if it was right away. So, yeah, for a second, Michigan looked like, oh, whoa, what's going on here? But they're they're fine. Um, outs like I don't even know what to think for this game. To be honest, like I don't know what I want Michigan State to get out of this game. What? <laughs> like, that, that, what? What you know? do they get out of this? Pulling off a miracle would mm-hmm. be incredible, right? But after you pull off the miracle, like, do you, do you think you can salvage the season after that? No, not really. Like that is your. That's why I said like yeah, this it's is the their Super season. Bowl. Yeah, yeah. So you treat this like your bowl game, but at the end of the day, it's not going to mean anything. Besides, you know, you're knocking off Michigan, and probably like Michigan won't get a number one seed. And if ties come down to it, it, it would it would hamper Michigan's season for sure. Yeah. Um. So I guess that's like the interesting takeaway. Uh, the matchups are terrible. And I, I just don't see a yeah, way. But Michigan State's O line versus Michigan's front seven. It's just yeah. I I don't know. Mm-hmm. I, I don't know what they do. Yeah, like they they have to pull everything, every trick, everything yeah. out the out the box. And it's not like to hit big play. They have to hit big plays consistently. Yeah, they can't just hit like one or hit two or three big plays. Mm-hmm. Okay, you got seventeen to twenty one. Then your defense has to stop Michigan. Who scored over forty five in the past three games? Yeah, and it's it's not like last year where I was a little more shaky about JJ. Whereas like this year, he's been throwing it more. He's been getting touchdowns more frequently. So I can't even say like the strategy last year. I always thought if you can get ahead on Michigan, they struggle to come back in games. You put pressure on them. And Mich- Michigan State got out to a seven nothing lead. Yeah, yeah and with they, the Keon Coleman touchdown. Catch. Right, and they've yeah. proved this year. That's not the that's not the case. They can come back. They've shown the ability to throw it pretty well. Honestly, Blake Corum hasn't done <clears throat> crazy numbers like he did last year outside of the touchdowns. It, it's he has he, like the yardage almost six hundred yards, which is still like top twenty in the country. Yeah, twelve touchdowns. It seems like he's been coasting, and he still has very good stats. Right so far. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but it's it's still not like the stats you would expect from a Potential Heisman nominee, I guess, if that makes any sense. Um, but yeah, do you do you see any fun out of this game, or is the fun just beating down on Michigan State? Uh, the the Michigan side is where the fun comes in because yeah. all Michigan fans, we just want to see them put it on Michigan State in a way that they will always remember. Mm-hmm. Like they they want to put a nail in the coffin of the Mel Tucker era. And that would be great to see as a Michigan fan. Mm. I'll, I, I would, I want to see something like 60 to nothing. Like, that That would make me happy. But yeah, from an MSU fan perspective, there's not much reason to watch this game, honestly. Yeah. There really isn't. Mm-hmm. Like, un- unless you just want to keep feeling bad. Yeah. And just just, just keep getting get your mind ready for basketball season. It's a, It's less than a month away. Yeah. 
That's why I said yeah, get I get ready for the real team, the real satisfaction at Michigan State. That's why I I agreed with uh, 97 one when they were talking about, you know, just ignore the football program this year and focus on basketball for a yeah. little while. If they hire somebody worthwhile, mm-hmm. then you pay attention to football again. But if they don't hire somebody, yeah, up to, yeah, like I, I'm not doing the Urban Meyer stuff with these crazy people. Yeah, like they they need to be honest with themselves. Why are they still doing this? I don't know. To me, like, it didn't they, make sense. But... There are a bunch of MSU fans now. The the keyboard warriors on the message boards are a, a bit crazy mm-hmm. and off, and they seem to really think. This could happen. It's not. Yeah. Are you one but, of the, are you the type of Michigan fan though that would be like nervous if Urban Meyer came to Michigan State? I would be angry. I would be very I, I said I would be nervous if Mike Elko from Duke came to MSU because he's a high level coach that can bring stability mm-hmm. and that means messing things up for Michigan again. Yeah. Like Mike D'Antonio. Because a lot of if people if they hire Urban Meyer, i just that means he is doing it out of spite. Mm-hmm. That that me ah. Uh, yeah. I, I don't even want uh, – I would hate it so much. Okay. I I think all of his, like, love for college football outside of, yeah, winning at I, – I think Ohio State is, like, his main love. Yeah. You can – during those Fox broadcasts, he is the worst homer ever. <laughs> like, he, he cannot hide his homerism. Yeah. He always thinks Michigan can lose. He's taking Herb Street's place. <laughs> He always thinks Michigan can lose, and he's just—he's he, a the ultimate homer. <laughs> so I—I I don't think Michigan State means anything to him hmm. at all. Hey, as long as you know, and I think he's fine money wise. I don't think he needs. <laughs> yeah, yeah. If I, that's kind of why I think Michigan State people are backing Urban Meyer, just because even if he's not for the school per se, they know that he's to at least go out there and win and beat Michigan or something like that. Um, and he'll definitely See, draw recruits. They're the the thing they're not thinking of, but they're not ready for when he has more health problems and he quits after two or three years. Yeah, are they ready for that? <laughs> I don't no. know. I, I feel like part of the Michigan State fan base right now. I'm just, I'm, I'm even mad. Where we just got back <laughs> onto the Urban Meyer. Just thing. I think part of the the Michigan State fan base just wants to get back to winning because like it's like we had that great stretch from you know 2010 ish. Um, up until 20, all the way you up to You won the 20, Rose Bowl in 2013. 2015, you made the uh, playoff. Mm-hmm. That was probably the cap. Yeah. Because I think 20, wasn't 2016, like the, they made the playoff and then they like went three and nine the next season or something. Yeah. It, it they, was weird. And then they kind of came back up yeah. for a little bit. It was playoff down, up down, like it's. Yeah. yeah. And it's kind of been a roller coaster ever since. Um, uh, So I think it's one of those things like, you get a taste of it and you want it back. And I think that's what Michigan State fans want. It's like Pistons fans. Pistons fans and Michigan State fans are one in the same. <laughs> we had uh, we had a golden era. We had a golden era and it went down quickly. It's, it's a bit different cuz the Pistons fans have seen championships. Yeah. Yeah. At the highest level. That's a bit different. We got Big 10 championship. It's okay. Something, okay. right? Listen, the Pistons, hey, made, when's, when's the the Pistons last time? made seven straight Eastern Conference Finals. Let's rest on that. When's the last time Michigan won the championship, huh? Uh, when I was one year old, been a minute, Jelly. Right? When I was one, <laughs> I was a baby. Couldn't watch it. So, realistically, in college football, some people are just enjoy the winning aspect of it. They don't have to win I understand. The, the whole yeah. championship. Um, so, yeah, that'll be fun. Um I don't know why, but we're having a, a Michigan Michigan State party this this weekend um, to gather up with friends and watch Michigan State get beat down. So that'll be good times. Yeah, yeah, you know, that's what we like to do. Uh, I'm trying to pull up the top 25 because I have not looked at it uh, since they updated this past weekend. So okay, so we still have Georgia, Michigan, Ohio State, Florida State. Makes sense. Yeah. Speaking of Georgia, Brock Bowers is out four to six weeks with a high ankle sprain. Who He's do they surgery? They have a big game coming up, don't they? A uh, big game? Mm, Missouri, not really. Ole Miss. Well, just the, the I, end I of their season is just tough. Missouri is six and one. So like, and without Brock, but they don't have a number one like go to guy. That's what I'm saying. Without Brock Bowers, right? So that makes their offense. And they just gave up twenty to Vandy to Vanderbilt. Mm-hmm. Like this Georgia team is still good, but mm-hmm. they're 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 not dominant at all. Yeah, that's what I was gonna say. Just. 
playing any ranked opponents without Bowers is going to be it's tough yeah. for them. Um, so they could they could potentially drop something. And if you drop a game at this point in the season, like your chances start to run out because there's still a lot of undefeated teams left over. Um, Ohio State's starting to look better. They uh, they keep improving. I feel like they're starting to get back to somewhat of form. I know they haven't played anybody crazy, but like we talked about last week, they kind of put a beat down on Maryland. They had that close one against Notre Dame. Big game this weekend. Big, big game. Yeah, biggest game of the weekend. The Penn first, State. Uh, the first of the big three in the Big Ten mm-hmm. matchup. Yeah. Penn State, <laughs> Ohio State. And like we said, this is going to be the – the tester for these top three Big Ten teams. Michigan will also get a good look of how these teams match up to see how they maybe uh, match up against those two teams as well. Um, what do you see out of this game? Do Because you, you said before that you thought Penn State would be the team to beat. Do you still think that? I am not a big fan of Penn State's offense. Mm-hmm. They have two high-level running backs that have just had decent seasons. Drew Aller is still taking steps as a young quarterback. He's very talented, but I I have to see him in this game because outside of their game against West Virginia, in which he played well, they really haven't. They played UMass last week, right? And they played Delaware, like yeah, crushed them. Yeah. So I I I I don't know how to feel about Penn State's offense. I also don't know how to feel about Ohio State's offense that much either because. Outside of Marvin Harrison Jr. being an absolute stud and a monster, mm-hmm. they don't have consistency in the run game. Emeka Ekbuka has been inconsistent, and I think he's hurt. Yeah. Cade Stover is a good tight end, but nothing special. And Kyle McCord is still good, but hasn't proven to be anything special. Right. So this could end up being a defensive matchup, mm-hmm. kind of like Ohio State and Notre Dame was. That game ended 17-14. Kyle McCord was able to make a, just a few more plays than Sam Hartman. And Ohio State pulled it out in the end at Notre Dame. I'm not sure if it's like it, that low scoring. Yeah. But I, I, I think it might end in the 20s, something like 27, 24. Mm-hmm. I don't see this being a bunch of fireworks. I think each team has to work hard for their points. They probably hit a, just a few big plays in the game. I'm not sure who wins, honestly. Like I, I I think Penn State's defense is really good. I think Ohio State's defense is really good. I don't trust either of their offense totally. Yeah. So yeah, it's I, I I can't wait to see it. Okay. Yeah, just to see how they feel each other out and what happens. Yeah. Um another fun night game this weekend, Florida State Duke. Um I mean Florida State's been been playing well. They're still undefeated, but they've had some close ones and uh it's put into question where it's like one week Florida State, people are like, oh, man, Florida State, number one team in the country. They could be the best. And then they have that close game with Clemson, and it's like, well, maybe they're not as good as we thought. Uh, this is another uh, test point, I think, for Florida State playing Duke, uh, yeah. who's still sitting at 5-1. and one. Right. Riley Leonard is most likely out. So I, oh, I, is he? Yeah. Okay. I think this is most likely. I don't think they beat them 41-3 like they did Syracuse. Right. But it might be like a yeah, like a 42 to like. 21 game or something like that yeah um and then we have washington at five which they played in the game of the week last week against oregon it might be the game of the year it was (laughs) it was a great game it was fun to watch it was basically back and forth the entire time uh yeah it was literally washington scored oregon scored washington scored oregon scored washington scored oregon washington oregon then oregon scored again early in the fourth but Washington finished it out with the last touchdown, um, which was pretty wild. And at this point, I would say Michael Penix is the top Heisman candidate. Yeah, he's <clears throat> he's by far the front runner. A few guys might still have a chance, including Bo Nix and mm-hmm. Caleb Williams, who lost in Notre Dame this past weekend. But yeah, those those guys that are putting up big numbers and getting big wins. As, if Washington wins out, I think Michael Penix is going to win the highest. Yeah, I think. Because he's just going to keep rolling in the passing yeah, game. That Notre Dame game for USC really hurt Caleb Williams. Yeah. Throwing three picks, I think that's really going to hurt his chances. But, yeah, there there's some other guys that maybe have a chance uh, to jump in there. 
depending on what happens. Um, then we have uh, Oklahoma at six, Penn State at seven. Those are the other undefeated teams, along with UNC, who's at 10. Uh, we have Texas and Oregon at eight and nine. And then we have Alabama at 11. And then a slew of other teams. Um, anybody else that you want to bring up? We got a, a lot of new faces into the, the top 25. Uh, Missouri's at 20. Uh, Air Force is in there. 22. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Tulane in there at 23. And Iowa at 24 after we just talked about their boring win. Um, but is there anybody that you want to highlight in this group? Uh, North Carolina being at 10 is really impressive. Yeah. Them getting Tez Walker back off of suspension from a ridiculous NCAA suspension. Mm -hmm. He's already, might he might be one of the best receivers in the country already. He had five catches and three touchdowns in his second game. He was unstoppable. Miami couldn't hold him. Drake May played really well. North Carolina's defense has improved a ton. And I think they have one of the more underrated running backs in the country in Omarion Hampton. Mm-hmm. He's like six foot, like 215. He's got some speed. He can run powerful. He He's he's really balanced as a running back, and I, I enjoy watching them play. Uh, Oregon State is up to 12th. Yeah. They are having a really good season. They had a really good win over UCLA. Dante Moore has been struggling some in Pac-12 play. I'm not surprised. But DJ Uyunglele played well. Damian Martinez played well as usual. Oregon State's defense mm-hmm. got it done. <clears throat> Good to see from them. I'm really happy for Missouri. They're up to 20 in the polls now. Nobody mm-hmm. expected them to be bowl eligible this soon. Yeah. They're just a quality football team. Right. And they look like good. I, yeah. Like Luther Burden is one of the best receivers in the country. Mm-hmm. Brady Cook has improved a ton. They they just – they figure out ways to win and they've got playmakers yeah more than people think they beat up on kentucky we talked about it uh last week that they had a chance against lsu so they could have easily been undefeated and like we said in two weeks they're gonna play georgia without brock bowers that'll be a great highlight uh for missouri as long as they can stay close in that game potentially win the game as well disappointing that louisville lost though um Making sure I don't forget anybody. Can I mention another team? Yeah, go for it. Uh, I hate the NCAA because James Madison is dominating the Sun Belt right now. Mm. They just came off of destroying Georgia Southern 41 to like 10, I think. Mm-hmm. And they're they're 6-0, and undefeated in conference. This is their second year in the FBS. They're clearly the best team. And they can't play in a bowl still. Mm. I, for why? Yeah. I Because the NCAA just says so. Right. Because they still have to prove they exist. Because they just have rules in place for no reason. Because they just live to make people upset. Yeah. And if they keep winning, they're going to be in the top 25. Yeah. James Madison, there's a great chance they could go undefeated. Mm-hmm. And they could get a New Year's six spot. But the NCAA might not let them. Yeah. Hmm. Abolish yeah. the NCAA. <laughs> Yeah, some of the some of the rules we've talked about in the yeah. past are just crazy. Shouts out to the Dukes. Yeah. But we've seen it more lately with basketball of teams not being tournament eligible. Yeah. But uh I remember Bellarmine won the A Sun yeah. I think last year. Yeah. And their and opponent got to go to it, the It was their first like big accomplishment in mm-hmm. Division One basketball. Yeah. And they could only celebrate just winning the conference because they couldn't go to the tournament. Right. Exactly. Yeah, it's it's crazy. It doesn't fully make sense to be honest, but you gotta live and die with it, I guess. They don't have to. <laughs> I I want to I want to call them a word that I'm not gonna say, but yeah, I'm gonna keep it PG yeah. here. Forget them. <laughs> oh, Chris is texting me about the the uh, Kevin Porter Jr. trade. That is a hilarious. <laughs> That is a hilarious random break. I know. <laughs> During college football. Well, it's just going into the camera. It's just because trade. Chris texted me and we talked about it before the show that Kevin Porter Jr. got traded and waived. Trade doesn't really do much. Kevin Porter Jr. might never play in the league again because yeah. he might be in jail. Victor Oladipo is That's now on a- the Rockets. Jeremiah Earl, Robinson Earl is now on the Rockets. Big deal. 
it, it wasn't worth talking about. That's why yeah. I didn't bring it up. But when Chris texted me, I figured I'd just say it because um, it's kind of funny. Um, moving on, we got some NFL. NFL has gotten real interesting. I feel like I, I picked some upset picks, and I feel like I picked the wrong ones. Uh, I didn't pick the Jets. I picked the Patriots no, who could have won. you did pick the Jets. I did? Yeah. I don't remember. I don't <laughs> okay, know if I did it was, pick the Jets. I don't know if it was just for fun. I remember. I do remember you saying this one's for Chris or something. I like remember. That. I remember picking a few upsets. I didn't pick the Browns to beat the Niners. No, no, none yeah. of us did. Um, so, I will say we were tied going into last night. So we both had nine correct picks. It was a lot of back and forth. Okay. Um, but you had Dallas on Monday night. So you won picks again for the uh, week. Yeah, I didn't want to, but so. I, I, they they played against Brandon Staley. What is what do you what do you do? You Fire the man. man. Fire him. Uh, so you're up four. Uh, it's 54 to 58. Um, I'm trying to look at some of the – you had Washington over Atlanta, uh, Cincinnati over Seattle, and the Jets over the Eagles, and Dallas over the Chargers. I had Jacksonville over the Colts, Houston over New Orleans, the Raiders over New England, and yeah. Everything else we were. New England should have won, but they truly are terrible. So they are. Yeah, let's cancel the Patriots. They are please. bad. I, they they could start Malik Cunningham soon. They might. When I, I saw I'm in for that. So watching the Raiders game aside, um, with Jimmy G being out, I thought they were dead to rights putting in Brian Hoyer. I don't know if you watched that game because it wasn't worth watching, but Brian Hoyer threw a couple bombs he threw some nice passes like they were pretty i was not happy when i saw him coming in the game i was not either <laughs> but he made a yeah. throw that I, post route he threw to jacoby myers yes. was right on the <laughs> yeah. he was right on the money yeah and it was for like 50 yards or something yeah. like that and i was like that's brian hoyer like michigan state brian hoyer like 40 year old brian hoyer <laughs> it was just wild it's to me something else he should be retired at his home Listen, sitting on the couch chad henney lasted a long time yeah. for no reason and i love that he did mm -hmm. so i honestly i can't even get mad at brian hoyer good for him yeah i mean i guess you're making you're making a paycheck sitting on a bench watching he beat football. out drew stanton that's why congratulations <laughs> i thought drew stanton would have lasted you beat longer. out the better msu quarterback good job <sighs> yeah it's wild um the nfl's gotten pretty wild there are no undefeated teams left and the lions are among the league's best right now and say uh, that again for the people in the back the lions the detroit lions the detroit lions are among the league's best teams what a time to be alive we are talking about a company of the eagles the dolphins the 49ers the chiefs and the lions yeah five and one teams pretty incredible and we'll we'll talk about the lions when we get to that game um first off we have the thursday night game this week Jacksonville at New Orleans. Kind of a weird Thursday night game. I'm taking Jacksonville. Okay. Both these yeah. teams. Derek Carr might just be done. He had some decent passes, though, to, like, Shahid in the last game. And How many? Like, three? Yeah. <laughs> they lost to Houston, but we like, talked about on. Houston being pretty good, so. I don't know. It's just, it's it's not working anymore. Yeah. It seems like I'm going to go New Orleans though, still because I don't know. Jacksonville is another one of those teams. Like, sure, they beat the Bills in London. Uh, they just beat the Colts, but they've dropped some weird games. And you Trevor still Lawrence, have, you, you have no idea what they are. Trevor Lawrence doesn't look that great now. ETN's been looking real good, honestly. But uh, yeah, I don't know what to to make of that team right now. Detroit at Baltimore. This is a big one. Detroit just beat Tampa Bay. On the road, they had tons of Detroit fans in Tampa, which we know a lot of Michigan people go down to Florida during the cold winter and stuff like that. But, like, they made some noise in that stadium. And it was fun to watch. They basically did everything they want. They got everything they wanted. They won 20-6. to six. David Montgomery got hurt. Craig Reynolds filled in. Didn't do much on the ground, but... Man, did he put the block of the year on yeah. for Amon Ross St. Brown. And Jamison Williams. We had a Jamison Williams sighting. 
And it was a good catch. Like a great catch. He had to turn over one shoulder, then realize it's over his other shoulder, backpedaling into the end zone and caught it. That's that's a good sign. Jared Goff had 350 yards, a couple touchdowns. Defense played solid against a good offensive line that Tampa Bay has, Mike Evans. Uh, now, granted, Mike Evans, yes, he dropped it. He didn't get a wide-open touchdown chance at one point. Uh, that was the tipped interception. But Detroit's rolling. And now they go into Baltimore where Baltimore is another team that they should be better than they are, but they've kind of stumbled along the way. They have one of the better defenses in the league. This could be one of those ugly defensive battles, to be honest. Um, But Baltimore's secondary is a little banged up too, so Detroit might be able to attack that like they have been to other teams recently. And if they win this game, Next week, when I come in, it's all bets are off. I might be talking crazy. The Lions are winning the Super Bowl. (laughs) I might be talking crazy. I'm not kidding. Uh, Listen, at this point, they are a top five team. Yeah. Damn near top three team in the league. Yeah. So, title contention Mm -hmm. is not crazy right now to talk about. No. But this is another big game because it's another – like playoff atmosphere type team. It's on the road again, which we, in the past couple of years, the Lions have struggled a little bit on the road. And this is kind of their biggest, their biggest matchup so far of the season, I would say. And then after this game, they get a home game on Monday night against the Raiders who are terrible. So that should be a free win. Basically. I hate to say that. And now, and then after that, they get the chargers, and that's going to be at L.A., and we all know L.A. fans are terrible, and there will be more Detroit fans probably there. And they're going against Brandon Staley. I'll take our coaches 100 times over Brandon Staley. Absolutely. And the rest of our season is a pretty easy schedule. We could be looking at the number one seed in the NFC. And that already sounds crazy to What's talk about. I, I have to say this again. Say that again for the people on the back. The Lions could be on pace for the number one seed in the NFC. Could you imagine? They could have a first-round bye. Could you imagine? And then get a home playoff game. <laughs> could you imagine? They would only need to win two games to make it to the Super Bowl. <laughs> yeah. I can't. I can't. <laughs> I can't think about it. Because I'll start talking crazy yeah. already. That's why. I, can I pick first? Go ahead. Don't. Don't you dare. Don't you dare do this now. Uh, <laughs> You've been riding the wave with me. And you, I'm the, uh, actually, I'm the no, Ravens no, 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 no. fan. I'm not doubting. I'm not doubting. The Lions are going to win this game. I was about to doubt. I was going to say, unfortunately. No, you can't. You know what? <laughs> we're putting you down. I'm, Unless you say it in two seconds, we're putting you down. I'm, put, I'm saying it in two seconds. To, to, I'm taking it back again. The, I'm picking the Ravens to win this game. <laughs> My emotions are all over the place, sure. man. These are the Detroit Lions. I don't know how to feel. You're done. The Lions are going to lose at least two or three more games this season. At least. Okay? Can you agree with that? They're not going 16-1. and one. <laughs> No. I, I'm still a little bit nervous about the end of the season playing against Dallas. Because Dallas is another like, wishy-washy It could be team. this game and then like two or three more for the season. Yeah. And as bad as Minnesota yeah. has played, we do have to go to Minnesota. Yeah. So Minnesota, Dallas, this like Baltimore this, game. This game is much tougher than the game at Minnesota. Yeah. Going yeah. to Minnesota right now is not intimidating at all. Right. But I wouldn't take them for granted. That's what just be, just playing the odds of the season. Mm-hmm. Not because uh, <laughs> I, I, de- I definitely don't I think get, Baltimore is better. I get what you're saying. Lamar, there's something off about that team. Mm-hmm. Lamar doesn't seem as dangerous. The receivers are the receivers again. After all those signings. Yeah. And I, I, I don't know. And Baltimore's defense is maybe even tougher than Tampa Bay's. I, th- I think they are. So Pretty solid. This could be, yeah, I, I'll just say this is one of those games. Okay. Yeah. The only thing that I'm worried about this game, I think this is a really good test for the offensive line, but I think they'll be able to hold for the most part. I think at one point Roquan Smith will get his. It just kind of turns out that way. Um, like I said, their secondary is a little banged up. Normally their secondary is a little bit scary. Um, 
Kyle Hamilton didn't, didn't get like suspended or anything. He just got kicked out of the one game, so he'll be back. Marcus Williams got kind of banged up in the game. I don't know how what he's doing. Um, the only thing that I'm really like concerned about is Lamar Jackson himself. We've seen it a hundred times this season already. The Lions are really good at getting quarterback pressured. You know the thing that Lamar Jackson is good at? Fumbling. That's true. <laughs> <laughs> he's good at fumbling. He's also good at getting out of quarterback pressures. Yes. Uh, if you got up early to watch the Tennessee Titans game, he made a couple plays that were Lamar Jackson. He can he can still do some, he can still do some of that stuff. So I think that's kind of the only way that the Lions could struggle is just containing him. Can I make one prediction? Point whatever. Okay. You call it. I think if the Lions win this game, I think it's majorly because of Ben Johnson. Mm -hmm. And I think going into next year, this game specifically will be like his the go to tape to watch of why Ben Johnson should be a head coach. Yeah. If they win this game. Mm -hmm. Because if they go into Baltimore and he schemes up some magic and they get some like easy touchdowns. Yeah. That'll be insanely impressive. I also think that the Lions realistically just have to focus on Mark Andrews too. Yeah. Because Baltimore has no run game. Their run game has been terrible. The Lions have the one of the best defenses against the run. And so I'm not fr- afraid of their run game. I'm not afraid of Odell Beckham Jr. I don't know why people think that he's still who he used to be. Zay Flowers is good, but I don't think he's going to he, – he doesn't take the top off of a defense. Mark Andrews kind of can just because he's he's a big body, um, can make good catches. So if you, they just focus on Mark Andrews and Lamar Jackson, I don't know if Baltimore has that many ways to attack the Lions. I think the Lions would have to make their own mistakes. And so far, they've been pretty good at being mistake-free. Even when Jared Goff throws the picks, he comes back and he seems better than uh, before. So I'm hopeful. I'm very hopeful. And with if Jamison Williams keeps trending upward, that could be really good news for this team. I have to take the line. He's got to cut the open drops. He yes. had another one to get to Tampa Yes, Bay. yes. Cleveland at Indianapolis. Not even. This is yeah. an ugly game. I'm, I'm going Cleveland. Okay. Their defense is beyond the real deal. They made San Francisco look like a normal team. Mm-hmm. And as long as they're healthy, I trust that defense. And against a below-average Colts offense, yeah, I definitely trust them. I'm going to go with the Colts. No idea. Are why. you? Yeah. Okay. I just think this Cle- is kind of like my Patriots pick last week. Uh, I don't know if it's that bad, but <laughs> <laughs> the- listen, did you see how the Colts looked against the Jags? I did. I did. Yeah. Um, I don't know. I feel like they're just gonna they're gonna be able to do something. Cleveland is weird too, though. Like their defense is really good, but like I said before. Like Baltimore ran all over Cleveland and Cleveland couldn't do anything. So I don't know. I think it's a, a decent toss up game. If the Colts had Anthony Richardson, I think I might take the Colts. Maybe. And the Ravens had Lamar Jackson. Yeah. That's true. Uh speaking of Anthony Richardson, it looks like he might get that season ending ending sold shoulder surgery. Jeez. Um, which is sad. He was playing really well. Buffalo at New England. We're not talking about it. Uh listen, when when do they Bench Mac Jones and it's Malik time. I don't know. I mean, they didn't even have him on the active roster until just this week. So. Hey, listen, put that kid out there. What I, happened to Bailey Zappi though? That's, a, that's another weird one. I I think Bill Belichick might just have a thing. I don't know. Hmm. I, I, I don't he's know. done with the white quarterback, huh? <laughs> <laughs> you said it, not me. <laughs> he's, Malik Cunningham <laughs> probably doesn't know the full playbook. He's, just. Give him a few a set of plays and let him go out there and just make <laughs> stuff happen. He's seen how the NFL is trending and he's trying to get on board. It's too late, Bill. <laughs> it is too late. It is too late. Uh, Washington at the Giants. I'm going Washington. The <laughs> Commanders are so inconsistent, but that was a good win they got on the road in Atlanta. Yeah, and you just you just can't trust the Giants right now. No, they got Saquon Barkley back at least. I heard Daniel Jones is supposed to play, so I don't know if I can pick them. If it was Tyrod again, I might I might take the shot. Did you see Ryan Clark? I think it was Ryan Clark called out the Giants saying that Tyrod's a better quarterback than Daniel Jones. Uh, is he? I don't know. 
I so like I love Tyrod. Listen, Tyrod obviously. Taylor got the Bills to the playoffs. Yeah. Before this whole new regime got mm. off to yeah. But I will say that the, the thing about Tyrod, Tyrod he, Taylor might be a better quarterback. Than he's a very Jones. he's a very safe quarterback. He does not throw into bad situations too often. He's got a bigger arm than Daniel Jones though. He could he yeah. could hit bigger passes. Yeah. He's a little. You bit, know what? I'm taking prime Tyrod Taylor over did. Yes. Yeah. Get him on board. I'm taking like that three year span of starting quarterback Tyrod Taylor for the Bills. I'm taking him over Daniel Jones. I am. I like to hear that. Um, but I'm taking the Commanders. <laughs> hmm. I want to be crazy. I'm taking the Giants. Screw it. Raiders at Chicago. Oh boy, this is another ugly one. Is Tyson Badgett starting? Uh, it looks like it. Oh boy. Yeah. How incredible would it be if Tyson Badgett just came out and balled, and he be- ended up being like the guy? Mm, it would have been better if he would have made undrafted the out of a D two school. Would have been better if he made the comeback against Minnesota. <sighs> is Jimmy G out? Uh, I don't know. Actually, he might be, but it's in Chicago. Yeah. Screw it. I'm taking Chicago. I'm going to the Raiders. This is Josh McDaniels, even though McDaniels versus Eberflus is such a disgusting coaching yeah, matchup. Is. Oh, my it's God. Real, it's real gross. <laughs> I'm, I'm just take the Bears. Yeah. Uh, Falcons at the Bucks. Desmond Ritter. Eh, he's <laughs> he's like thrown for over 300 the last two games, but he's also I, thrown like I'm five sick. picks. Can, can I just cut this real quick? And say Tyrod Taylor has two better passing seasons than Daniel Jones as a starter. Yeah. 2015, 3,035 yards, 20 touchdowns, six picks. Mm-hmm. And I'm sure he had over 500 rushing yards. Yeah. Daniel Jones hasn't thrown over 15 passing touchdowns. Okay, back to what, what was the matchup again? <laughs> Falcons at the Buccaneers. Buccaneers trying the, to bounce back. I'm taking the Buccaneers. Okay. Start Taylor Heineke. Like, why, what are we doing at this point? Put the guy in that can consistently do things. I mean, for the Des- most part, Desmond Ritter's looked okay. I guess three interceptions in the second half. Yeah, three. Yeah, that was not good. And that's with Kyle Pitts getting his first touchdown of the season, mm-hmm. and Drake London having like nine catches for over a hundred yards. Yeah. What happened to Bijan? Like, what happened? To it Bijan? just feels like, like that's the thing that doesn't make sense about the Falcons. That's what's so frustrating. At first, it was like, run, 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 run. Okay, why don't you use Kyle Pitts and why don't you use Drake London? Now it's like, okay, they're finally throwing it to their tight ends a lot. They're throwing it to Drake London a lot. They're throwing the ball more often. Where's Bijan? We need a good mix, Arthur Smith. I'm, I'm just not a fan of Arthur Smith. <laughs> no. Even the way he looks. it's a, <laughs> He looks like a con man. Yeah. Like, I, I don't know. Yeah. Um, Do I want to take the Falcons? There's a lot of toss-up games this week. A lot of teams on buys. I'm going to go with the Falcons. Whatever. I don't know if I believe in that one as much as I do the Giants. Pittsburgh at the Rams. Pittsburgh coming off their buy. Deontay Johnson, I think, is back for this. Cooper game. Cup is back, and he's he's Cooper Cup. He's Cooper Cup. Yeah. I'm Puka, taking the I'm, Puka Nakua dropped another tu- dropped a touchdown in the end zone. He could have had another monster day. T.J. Watt might make this hell for Matthew Stafford. Oh, man. Matthew Stafford might throw a it's couple It's in picks. L.A., but they don't have any home no, they don't. field advantage. There's nothing. <laughs> Terrible L.A. sports fans. Mm-hmm. Give me the Steelers. Okay. I'll take the yeah. Rams. It's a good flip game. Could be ugly. Arizona at Seattle. Battle of the Birds. I mean, you got to take Seattle. Yeah, Cardinals are. Like, Josh Dobbs is trying his hardest. It it is apparent that like he is not bad at all. Yeah, he does his best to like keep drives going and make some plays without making mistakes. Mm-hmm. They're just not good enough. Yeah, they have they those put all in, white uniforms were clean. Yeah, they put they in a lot good. of effort. They just uh, they haven't been able to get it done. Look good, feel good. In this in, in this instance, they're not playing good. <laughs> yeah, uh, Green Bay at Denver. That's an ugly game, man. Yeah, it is. Especially because Green Bay was uh. looking good for a little while and then. They threw up that dud before their bye week. I really don't like this game at all. Lions exposed Jeez, Jordan Love. Uh, I'll go with the Packers. I'll tell you that. Okay, I'll go with Green. I'll go with Denver just because. Okay, 
I can't. I, I, I don't like that matchup at all. No, it's it's a oh. it's another ugly one. Yeah. Um, Chargers at the Chiefs. Stupid Chargers. Brandon Staley versus the Chiefs. I can't even fully be mad at Brandon Staley because Justin Herbert threw that pick at the end of the game. He did. Herbert does make mistakes, but and also the Chiefs aren't. No, the they're other. they're doing they're playing. They're vulnerable. They they're playing through their defense a little bit more than than normal. I'm going with the Chiefs. Okay, I'll go with the Chargers because I'm crazy. Because it's at Arrowhead, so because I'm crazy. Yeah, the perfect reasoning. I'm feeling crazy. <laughs> Uh, Sunday night football is a good one. Miami at Philadelphia. Battle of top teams. Philly has an issue. Do they? What? And what is what is the exact – I don't know what the exact problem is with Okay, Philadelphia. I thought you had an actual issue or a reason for their issue. I, I mean, uh, you can you – I get you, see something's the, uh, wrong. Yeah. The offense just isn't clicking like it was last year. Mm-hmm. The defense, specifically the DBs, just aren't that great right now. Did – Outside of Darius Slay. Did – Losing Shane Steichen do more to them than we thought. It might have because their offense is when when Jill, when uh, Jalen Hurts isn't like in a groove, mm-hmm. he makes some bad decisions. He's not running his offense. That interception in the fourth against the Jets that was bad. I don't know what he was seeing. Yeah, and if he's not seeing the field well at this point, that's not good. Right. They're they're hardly getting Devontae Smith involved. I well I think he had like eleven targets last week, but he only had a couple catches. Like. There's just something off. I agree with you. Can't Where really are they playing again? Uh, they're playing Miami. Give me Miami. It's at Philadelphia. Yeah. I'll go with the Dolphins. Okay. Um, man. It, do- it doesn't take much to get them in a groove. It yeah. really doesn't. I'm going to take Philly because it's at home. And maybe now because all of a sudden people are starting to doubt Philadelphia that this will turn them around. Joey Tysick says Jalen Hurts will outduel to a tag of a low up. I can see it, to be honest. It's possible, um, but their offense is too stagnant. Right? And this game is huge for Miami, too, because if Miami loses this game, then they they have two playoff losses, basically. They lost to the Bills badly, and if they lose to the Eagles, then they might lose some steam because they're just rolling over bad teams. So that'll be a good tester. Man, whoever wins this week of picks, well, it could go terribly wrong for one of us. Is it, is it already done? Or it'll be the very list? even. No, there's Monday night, okay. but I just was looking at it. Yeah. So far, we have two games where we picked the same team. That's maybe a first. Yeah. Um, San Francisco at Minnesota is our Monday night matchup. I can't pick Minnesota. I just can't. Christian McCaffrey might be out, though. I don't Debo care. Debo Samuel might be out. I don't care. Wow. I don't care. If I knew the injury report, I might care. I'm picking... But Justin Jefferson is Listen, out. People are bagging on Brock Purdy for yeah. having a rough game. Again, what other quarterbacks in the league would have just played amazing? Yeah. With their top running back out, their one of their better receivers out, mm-hmm. and a really good defense in their stadium. Name the other quarterbacks in the league that are just playing great like that. Why are they ripping apart Brock Purdy for this type of game? Hey, Everybody has these types of games. When Today, when I was watching ESPN and people are talking about the Lions potentially being the best team in the NFL, people were knocking the Lions, or they were knocking the people that say the Lions could be because they think that the 49ers are the best team, but they, they're they saying the only reason the 49ers lost is because they had injuries and stuff like that, and that's why they're the number one team because they're playing with through the injuries. People don't bring up the Lions are playing through a lot of injuries themselves and have been, uh, to be honest. Um, so it's it's interesting how people do that with certain teams, certain players. Like you're saying now with Brock Purdy, they're saying, oh, maybe he's not that great of a quarterback because he doesn't have two of the better players in the NFL. That's how it works. Yeah. That's how football works. Yeah. <laughs> like, so what are we doing? It's a, it's a team sport yeah. is what they call it. Um, Yeah. I mean, every – most – Great quarterbacks have at some point a great wide receiver on their team. Yes. It's just it's just how it goes. Um otherwise they they're gonna struggle, obviously. Yeah, it, it doesn't make sense. I don't get it. I can't take Minnesota, like I said, because I don't know the injury report. Um if I had if I knew that like Christian McCaffrey was gonna be out, 
Uh, if I knew that Debo There's Samuel, was much, they're be all out. listed as questionable. Yeah, everybody. Yeah, yeah, it's too early in the week. Yeah. Um, but I know Justin Jefferson is out, and that's yeah. all I need to know. Yeah. And Minnesota didn't look too great with him out. Um, they they just happened to play Chicago. <laughs> yeah, they threw a little bit better. They threw a little bit more to Jordan Addison. KJ Osborne didn't step up too much. Yeah, they just they look out of sorts. So, win is a win, I guess. It is. That's the, that's how the NFL works. And technically, they're not eliminated just yet until they play the Lions. We'll see. Okay, that's your uh, the week seven picks. I think that's it for everything I wanted to bring up. I wanted to just talk about the Lions and how big of a, a game this is going to be. And like I said. They win this one. If they win this one. All bets are off. I'm not I'm not gonna go extra crazy. I'm gonna if they win this game, then they just gotta keep it up. That's what that's what I'm gonna say. Yeah. But they if they It'll be it'll be impressive if they do it. If they win this game back to back road wins like this don't happen to the Lions. Yeah. They could end up fourteen and three. That would be insane. If the Lions went fourteen and three. Yeah. But I Jeez. think that's on well, the table. So what is what's their record since like week? 10 or 11 or something last year. Uh, it's like 13 and 3 or something. Yeah, something around there. They so, are, they're just behind the Chiefs and the 49ers. Yeah. Also in that span, I believe, Jared Goff has thrown for 4,500 yards, 29 touchdowns, and four picks. Yeah. MVP? He, Question mark? Honestly, if you want some betting advice, Jared Goff is still a 22 to 1 favorite on the MVP voting. That's some pretty good odds right now. If the now. Lions win 12, if they go 12 and 5, I think he's going to win the MVP. I hate to and say this. On, yeah. I don't know what my brother did, but my brother said that he bet Jared Goff to win the MVP, and that was at the beginning of the season. I can't imagine what those odds might have been. So, I'm I'm curious. I haven't asked. Him. I wonder how much money you put on it. Knowing that kid, it could be crazy. If he put like 50, that's that's going to be a payday. He might easily put 50 on it. Yeah. Um so yeah, that it's it's nuts what the Lions can do. We're not, we're still not used to it. I'm still not used to it. it. It like feels weird to be talking about the Lions with such positivity and just like you go into a game. Like I've heard people say it all over the place. You go into a game and you just think you're gonna win. And so now, like if they beat Baltimore, at that point, like I'm okay if they lose to the Chargers. Now I don't think they would lose to the Chargers, but that's another tough away game just because the Chargers have a really strong offense. But, like, at that point, okay, we just won against Tampa, Baltimore. Raiders don't really matter, but it's a Monday night game at home. And we'd go 3-1 and one on a stretch that's somewhat tough having three away games out of those four. And then the rest of our schedule, it becomes kind of a cakewalk. We have to play. You have the Bears twice. You yeah. got the Packers at home. You have Minnesota the Minnesota twice. twice. Yeah. Denver is in there. And Dallas. Wow. And if we beat the Chargers, I'm not trying to get ahead of ourselves. And then, like, Dallas is the only team that scares me. And with Dallas, you never, like, I told you, I could be talking crazy. Next week, I might be talking crazy. I wouldn't blame you. I'd Listen, if they win this game, I want you to come in with the hottest takes. Okay. The hottest. I'll, I'll think some up. Yes. I'll think some up. Because I don't, I don't want to just be like, Super Bowl or something, because that's like everybody's gonna say that. Um, I'll try to I'll try to think of something like off the wall fun. I guess I don't know. But right now I'm enjoying the ride. It's great. And the other thing too that I want to mention real quick, even if we drop this game to Baltimore, just look competitive, stay in the game, make it close. They're five and one, right? And even if they lose, they're five and two. Exactly. And then you just beat. You go do your take your business uh, to the Raiders. Now you're six and two, Chargers. You recoup, maybe you're seven and two, and we're still sitting really pretty exactly. on the whole season. So, yeah, if we if we beat Baltimore, I'll be ecstatic, and uh, it's gonna be fun going forward with this team. But right now, Detroit Lions football is at a precipice that we've never seen before. 
This has been Views for the Sidelines. We will see you guys next time. See, Ben Simmons might be back. Do you believe it? Not yet. Neither do I.